until voters turn out, but in 94 days, the economy's bottom could just drop out. That is when all those Bush tax rates end and all those sequestration spending cuts kick in. It is the fast approaching train wreck that nobody, nobody's trying to derail. To be fair, this guy is, only no one's listening to him. Texas Republican Congressman Ron Paul joining me now on the phone. You know, uh, Congressman, no one even mentions this. It's like uh, the storm that isn't there. I, I guess the thinking is, let's get past the immediate storm, the election, but by then, $4 billion a day, you know, 40 days, uh, you do the math, we'll be that much deeper in debt. Yeah, it's sort of unbelievable. I, I, I think they're in denial. Uh, they're, they're not bad people. I think they follow the wrong economics, but they should wake up. Uh, the people I talked to, talk to around the country for the last few years, they seem to know what I'm talking about. But in Washington, it's, uh, if they do know, they want to keep it quiet because it's a blame game. Who's going to get blamed? Right. Who can hold out the law? Well, what do you think's going to happen, Congressman? I had a prominent Democrat here who was telling me his feeling seems to be that um, they'll, they'll do a, maybe a, a, a three to six month extension of all the Bush rates, including those in the upper income, then hash it out with whoever is elected, whether it's Barack Obama or, or Mitt Romney. Um, that was his view. What's yours? I think that's a pretty good estimate. And, and that sort of, once again, buries the problem, what we're just now complaining about. But, but the whole thing is uh, that they haven't solved any problems. But I think this is what they've done. Look at what they did last summer when they had to raise the debt limit. They, they push it aside. They, they push it aside. So I think they, they will. Uh, but why, why this is so bad economically and bad for the market is it, it, the market isn't suffering from a lack of liquidity and money in the, circ, you know, in the banks. Right. They're loaded. But it's a lack of confidence. Well, here, they're worried about January. So come up December or so, well, we're not going to do anything about it. What does that do for the marketplace? I would say it does nothing other than add to the uncertainty of our future. You know, uh, and, and you're better at the history of this stuff, Congressman, than I'll, I'll ever be, but the one thing I've noticed is sort of like the market geek here at Fox is a lot of these guys don't respond until they're, they're staring at market panic. In other words, there's a free fall in the market, and that's why they, I think they rush to oftentimes bad deals, bad decisions. They rush a rescue or TARP or whatever because the market has this huge multi-hundred-point hissy fit, and they think to calm the savage market beast, they cobble together a deal that we know is stupid at the time um, just to, to calm the markets down and only to discover that the markets go right back to a selling spree despite it. Should yeah, I, they ignore I, the markets altogether? They, they, uh, they can pay attention only to how they maintain or get power. And I think this is what drives Washington. Uh, good policies uh, does not drive Washington. Sometimes good policy is a political negative. So, but what they do, Congressman, I'm sorry I wasn't clear, sir, but I, what they do is they respond to the short-term gyrations, and the markets are just as short-term oriented, I think, as a lot of your colleagues on Capitol Hill, that a deal to get us over the hump, any deal to avoid a shutdown, any deal to avoid putting us on the brink, we'll think about some of the ramifications of that later, but get us past yeah. the brink. And I think it's almost like, uh, you know, fooling around with the taxpayer in the meantime, and they don't care. But, but they're deceiving themselves there. Yes. I think so often in terms of sound money, and if you look at what the stock market has done uh, since the uh, recession hit, actually uh, the, uh, the, the 500, uh, S&P 500, is down 60-some percent. So in terms, we're in a terrible bear market in real money, even though they print all this money and it goes, and the stocks go up. You know, the traders love it. You're, you're talking about in dollar-denominated terms. Yeah, right? in no, dollars. Right. But I don't think that's the real thing, because uh, if, if the true test of measuring a value of a currency is a commodity, and especially gold, that means the people who own these stocks aren't wealthier at all, but the only ones who get wealthy are the ones who are able to trade and anticipate what the Fed's going to do and, and in and out, right, that right. sort of thing. So I, I don't think this, uh, when I see the stock market going up like it did immediately after QE3 was announced, that, just, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't, shouldn't, shouldn't reassure anybody, but a lot of the people in the marketplace, actually, they probably aren't too interested, you know, in the economic policy as no. they are in 
What's the trading reaction going to be to this? That's exactly right. And Congress, you and I, you and I could remember a time where the markets would not have jumped at a federal bailout. They would have recoiled. But times are different, you know. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is the whole thing. It should have be, it could be interpreted exactly opposite. The fact that he announced QE3 could have been interpreted as, wow, he is really yeah, panicked. Exactly. He, that you is know, a brilliant is, point. Big trouble. That is a very brilliant point, as are all of yours. Congressman, thank you very, very much. Uh, Congressman Ron Paul, of course, the QE3, as you viewers all know very, very well, quantitative easing when the, when the Fed just jumps in the market, buys any notes and bonds, it can get its hot little hands on to forcibly keep interest rates low and furthermore to keep them near zero right through I think what 2015 they're saying